Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to apply the CBind function in the R programming language. So in the video I'm going to show you several examples and in the first example we are going to use the example data that we can create here in lines 2 to 6 of the code. So in lines 2 to 4 we are creating a data frame. So if you run these lines of code, you will see that at the top right, a new data frame object appears. We can also have a look at this data object by double clicking on the data object. And then you can see that our example data frame contains five rows and three columns. Then we are also going to create a vector for this example. And uh, this vector can be created with line six of the code. So if you run this line of code, you will see that a new vector object appears and this vector object has five numeric values. So let's assume that we want to bind this data frame and this vector together into one single data frame. Then we can use the CBind function, as you can see in line eight of the code. So within the CBind function, we simply need to specify the data that we want to combine by columns. So in this case, we want to combine our data frame data one and our vector y one. And then we can store this new data frame in a new data object um, with this first part of the code of line eight. So if we run the whole line of code, you will see that another data object appears at the top right. And this new data object is called data new one. And if we click on this data object, you can see that a new data frame appears. And this time this data frame contains exactly the same columns as our example data one. And in addition to that, another column which contains the values of our vector y1. So as you have seen in the first example, we column binded um, a data frame and a vector. However, it is also possible to C bind two data frames. And this is what I'm going to show you in the second example. So first we need to create a second data frame. And this is what we are doing here in lines 11 and 12. So if you run these lines of code, you will see that another data frame appears at the top right, which is called data two. We can also have a look at this data frame by clicking on this data object. And now you can see that our new data frame uh, also contains five rows and two columns. Now, if we want to combine the first data frame, data one, and the second data frame, data two, we can apply exactly the same syntax as we did in the first example. So within the CBind function, we need to specify the first data frame, then we have to write a comma, and then we have to specify the name of the second data frame. So if we run line 14 of the code, you will see that another data object appears at the top right. And by clicking on this data object, you can see how the new data frame looks like. And as you can see, this new data frame is a merged version of data one and data two. Yeah, so finally, in the last example, I want to show you how to bind multiple vectors and data frames within one line of code. So this is uh, what you can see here in line 17 of the code. And um, what you have to know about the CBind function is that you can assign as many data objects as you want to the CBind function. So in this case, we are merging our data frame one. Then we add to this data frame uh, our vector y1. And then we also merge to this final data frame, the data frame data two. If we would have more data, we could even add more data objects here in the CBind function. So if you run this whole line of code, you will see that another data object appears here at the top right. And um, if we click on this data object, you can see our final output, which is a data frame that contains the columns of data one, the vector y1, and the columns of data two. 
Yeah, so this is basically what I wanted to show you in this video. However, if you want to learn more about the CBind function and about the merging of data in R in general, then you could have a look at my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial on this topic in which I'm explaining the R programming code of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you could check it out there. And furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye bye.